Reginald? Oh, I'm ready, Reginald. I got you. Reginald is a 1985 Reginald. 1985, Reginald, starring Reginald, Star Reginald R. Wizio as Wizio himself. As himself. And, and then when people write in, what? what? <laughs> why, why do you use Reginald as a noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb? It's just Reginald. That's it's it. just how things are. It's just how things are. It's been a while. Let me get into it like Crispin Glover did. Get into it like... McCandless did. <laughs> we should do, we should do a meme of Estevez with his hands on the giant jack, and then just a dude like bucking him by, <laughs> like, <laughs> like this is the way to get transmogrified, right? No. Anal transmogrification. Yeah, <laughs> anal transmogrification. Say that ten times fast. Right. Yeah. Welcome back to the. Uh, into the night podcast we are here on episode 109 and we are going to be talking about american ninja starring none other than uh michael michael dudikoff, dudikoff. aka doogie cough yeah. i am mc reginald r wizio uh also known as pbk phone book killer and as always co-host and producer I am villain, and I guess I'm gonna just be uh, what's his name, Jackson today. You can be Joe Jackson, and you're gonna be our. Uh, our who are you gonna be today? You're gonna be I, our titular character. I think you're gonna have to be. You're gonna have to carry this. I flag. don't want. I, I, I want to be. be the, I want to be Judy Harris. <laughs> okay, you, that's fine. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I, I'm gonna be Jackson. I, as an insecure man, cannot play the role of a woman, so I will take. Uh, who could I be? Hitchcock? <laughs> Hitchcock. Yeah, Thickcock. yeah. You're hi- you're be, you'll be T. Hickcock. Yeah. And I'll T. Be, Thickcock. I'll be the yeah. sidekick Jackson. Who plays Judy Aronson's uh, overbearing protective uh, army? Cur- oh, Colonel. Yeah. Col- army Colonel. Colonel yeah, yeah, she, yeah. yeah. He is the. I yeah. can't be Michael Dudikoff. He's so bad. I'm He's sorry. So Even though I, I smoke dust with him if we met him at our crew. Yeah, he seems yeah. like a nice guy. He seems like a cool And that guy. might be the problem with this movie. He's a little too <laughs> nice. So it's American nice. Ninja, 1985, starring Michael Dudikoff, uh, Judy films. Aronson, uh, a couple other people. Uh, who directed this, PBK, if you don't mind asking? I don't think it's anybody of, that anyone's uh, probably heard of uh, ever. Sam Furstenberg. Okay. Who sp- well, actually, no. It says he who specialized in the genre in the 80s. I'm guessing he did American Ninja 2, probably. The Maybe three. In 1987. Yeah. It got mixed reception, but it was a financial success. And since then, it is considered a cult film. Bullshit. Of course, of course, it, <laughs> it, oh, it I, definitely I, is. That I shout it's out a total to cult film. Uh, Menachem Golan and Hiram Globus, uh, the two Israeli brothers who were the heads of Canon Films, yeah, which produced every Death Wish film, every one of these ninja films, every low budget shitty Chuck Norris film, and I mean any any exploitation thing in the eighties, Van Damme, Bloodsport, yeah, the breakdancing craze of the eighties. It's all yeah. these guys. So shout out to them. So uh yeah, we were talking just a little bit of background before we get into it. Uh that this is basically with the exception of Revenge of the Ninja, you said, which came out in eighty three. And Answer the Ninja, which which okay, so just indulge me. The it's not called this, but in the zeitgeist, the Ninja Trilogy is a trio of films produced by Canon Films, which uh, the only recurring character or actor, rather, is the 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 what I whom I call the Hollywood Ninja, which is uh, the Honorable Sho Kasugi. Who, um, if you look up his Wikipedia page, he's like a fourth don in like six different disciplines, like. Shotokan karate, like Ryu something karate, uh, Taekwondo, uh, Aikido, uh, and ninjutsu, actually. Um, he's a real black belt in ninjutsu yeah. as well. Anyway, um, he did these three movies in 81, 83, uh, and 84, respectively, with Lucinda Dickey from the Breaking uh, movies. Uh, shout out to Breaking to Electric Boogaloo. Ain't no stopping us. Right. No stopping Shout out to uh, TKO, right? Uh, Turbo Kelly and Ozone. And um, what happened in essence was since these films, like you said, were such a domestic success here in the States, um, 
you know elephant in the room what what would happen if if we make the ninja american uh in, in this case a white blonde guy yeah <laughs> aryan ninja the return and uh and whatever i mean i guess you do what you got to do right to bring over a crossover exactly you know. but yeah like you said this this crossed over the ninja craze into american culture influenced which is my still prevalent very to this day. the reason i lived in japan for almost 10 years can be pinpointed to this very craze right here that's let's be honest yeah i mean after this you have every kid had rubber nunchucks rub, yeah. rubber shuriken rubber throwing stars everybody had that poster i remember my cousins the poster with all the pressure points and yeah. the death points yeah <laughs> and then uh after this you have shredder and then we said ninja gaiden you shinobi, ninja gaiden, shinobi. Tur- i mean turtles could have been tmnt uh you got sub-zero and scorpion from mortal kombat uh uh, oh, Snake Eyes, you got Storm Snake Shadow. Eyes, Storm Shadow, yeah, who, yeah, the, the 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 hand with yeah, Daredevil yeah, and Electra. Yeah, yeah. Ninjas were everywhere. Electra, Electra not just. from eight from like let's say eighty five when this movie came out till like ninety. Uh, we'll say nine. Yeah. Well, I'd say even further past that. I'd say in the probably ninety six or ninety seven when the Ninja craze started to kind of tape off a really? little bit. Yeah. I thought it was dead. I mean, think of the Power Rangers are basically kind of like Ninjas 2. That was 93, 94. 92 in Japan, 93. Uh, But but that's more, I forgot the term for that. You also forget that we are seven years apart. So when you were were cruising high school, I was still rocking the Ninja craze in elementary school and middle school. But either way, even then I wasn't. It doesn't. Sure. It doesn't matter because <laughs> yeah. uh, today we're yeah. talking about 1985's American Ninja. What a great year! Fuck 85. Back to the Future. Yeah. Right. Give me another one. Goonies. Yeah. 85. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gremlins uh, the year before. I think Big Trouble in China may have been 85. Maybe it was 86. 86 I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Either way. Oh, Commando. Fuck oh, yeah. to the year. Fucking Commando. Yeah. But anyway, uh, start us off here, PBK. All it, right. Uh, <laughs> what is American Ninja, and what are we about to get ourselves into here? We are about to get ourselves into the most B of grade horror. Uh, not a horror, but just schlocky action. I mean, uh, I, I guess if there's a, if this is a love letter to anything, even the music, if you remember, it, it's like da-da-da-da-da-da-da. So it's... it's, it's kind of like mash maybe that maybe you were too young for the, that but no i remember enough mash but to me i thought the so music also was like like you said it's definitely very americana like not i mean that yeah, yeah no, no 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 but like very military kind of in right. a positive manner the music feels almost like a 70s movie even though this is the yes. 80s it feels very 70s influence from so it's old martial art films as militaristic well cadence, as military yeah you're already kind of uh prompted to be in this who ya pro America? Uh, I mean, we are America's the good guys. We're it, on like it's a, Cold yeah, War, a, you know. We're on a base somewhere in the in Philippines, the Philippines or yeah, somewhere yeah. around there, and uh, whatever somewhere in the Pacific. It's just some army base, whether in Philippines, Papua New Guinea. I don't know. What did you say? French Polynesia, somewhere <laughs> Micronesia, yeah. and um, but it was shot in the Philippines. I just saw the credits, and um, excuse me. Um, I don't know. We just start off with this. Uh, well, let's start off with Joe Armstrong's uh, introduction. Um, hacky sack in, in the military in 85, anyone? Everyone's shirts are untucked. So, the, no, no, no one's wearing covers. Yeah. That's totally Everyone's salute and real, real lax. <clears throat> the, 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 the commander of Big this. Big poofy hair. You're supposed to have a fade always. Yeah, yeah. The, the commander of this Nobody's troop crew must just be like in the back smoking dust with everybody. <laughs> telling everybody to just chill. You don't talk that way about Alfred Teeth. Yeah, thick, thick cock. cock here. Yeah, that's that's the uh, boss. Right? Shout out boss. to uh, his John Wayne uh, picture in the background for no reason. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so we're introduced to um, Joe Armstrong. Uh, he's the strong, silent type. Yeah. <laughs> quite, quite literally and figuratively, uh, he's fucking with a butterfly knife. <laughs> he's fucking around with a butterfly knife. Could probably count this dude's lines in this movie on it maybe two, two hands, hands yeah, or, or yeah, yeah, you yeah. might need maybe an extra one. Emphasis on, like I said, short, strong, <laughs> silent type. But that he's 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 the poor man's Kevin Bacon. Like, yes, like Jesse said. Jess called it yeah, the poor man's Kevin Bacon. And they're on some convoy, delivering stuff, maybe top secret stuff. I don't know. Maybe um, maybe weapons. Which is an, a foreshadowing. Supply, yeah, foreshadowing. And uh, they get ambushed by ninjas on the road, um, none of whom are worth mentioning except for 
The one Mexican American <laughs> Star, yeah, looks, Star Ninja. <laughs> Star Ninja. He looks Puerto Rican. He looks like he could be a part of my family. He looks like one of my distant uncles. Yeah. Um. He's got a. He's he's not oh, COVID uh, compliant with at the all. Mask. He's got a he's got a star of what I assume is a shuriken on his eye, right, right around his eye. He he and he is not where he's wearing a. Uh, not even a half mask. He's wearing his full mask under his nose. <laughs> under his nose. Imagine, what would Sub Zero? What would fuck, Sub Zero <laughs> would do? He'd be like four down, four high punch, wow. rip the spine out. It'd be over, because for like you said, he's not even COVID compliant. <laughs> in modern, people won't be like, excuse Star me, sir, Ninja. sir. You sir, have to have is, your mask this is on rest- your face. This is a restaurant, AT max <laughs> occupancy. <laughs> Once you get to your seat, you can take your mask off, but you need to have that up. And you, and need, then, you need to lift it up in between bites and or, drinks. Yeah, or like him, well. him and Scorpion are out on a, on a mission, and he's like, listen, bro. If you I don't know, put that mask I know, up, I know I'm, I'm from throw, hell. I'm gonna get yeah. I'm gonna get over here on you and put an uppercut you into the yeah. pit. He was very disrespectful, Black Star super Ninja. disrespectful. Yeah. And he, I think he's the only one, w- w- along with Dudikoff and probably Jackson, who actually know martial arts or are actually doing right. martial arts right. in the some movie form of martial every arts. Or, or you yeah. know some of the unnamed you know yeah. du- you know I hashtag I'm not Dudikoff uh, stunt doubles, <laughs> but yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we got the convoy. They're attacked. Yeah. Uh, let's. We got to introduce the lovely, uh, my cheap ploy to get her on this show, Judy Aronson. Woo! Oh yeah. <laughs> God love. Woo! Yeah. Judy God love Aronson Judy Aronson. She from, carries a lot of it. She's uh, a favorite of mine. Weird. So hard. Who was she in Weird Science? She was so in. She's in Weird Science, and she plays. What's her cat? What's her character's she, name? She, I can't remember her character's name. I don't even know if they say it. Well, they yeah, they probably do once. Or it's twice. like stiff. So and she, S- Tiffany and Stacy, the two boys like in Weird Science. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Michael Hall and the they other e- guy. They each pair with. They each pair girl. with a girl. Yeah. That's why the blonde gets the blonde. The blonde gets the blonde, and the, and brunette, the brunette gets, gets the, the brunette. brunette. Yeah, and the brunette is Judy Aronson. And that guy, that fruity guy, squeezes her yeah, butt. He, yeah, he, <laughs> it's, I it's that little <laughs> wild, Jack. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> she's also shout out to one of my favorite movies. Yeah, in yeah, uh, yeah. Friday Part Four. Yeah, you got that. Final chapter. She uh, she gets stabbed right through the raft in the lake when she's out there topless. I forgot. Over? Looking super hot. Woo! Yeah. Un- underneath. I, underneath. <laughs> Brandy, 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 nice brandy. tush. We're gonna ask if that was her real body or stunt body. Shout out to Crispin Glover. Hey, shout out to the disco version of that song. Da- what song? So that you have the theme song from like one and two. Oh, I know exactly and then what you're talking about. For, yeah. for Friday three D. Yeah, it's like. Right. We're going right. off on a anyway, Friday right. tangent Sorry. here. I was remixing it into the reality. Well, I know what you're song. talking about. Though. It's terrible. Shout out to Jeffrey Coombs. Anyway, so Judy Aronson, so cute, so hot, so in love with Dudikoff within the first 10 minutes of the movie. We we were treated to this, what would you say, Romancing the Stone meets... Indiana Jones or like uh, uh, it was uh yeah he said something funny it's like romancing before. the stone uh meets <sighs> god damn it that doesn't or commando commando that's what it was. meets yeah. romancing the stone yeah and uh he drags her through the mud yeah. he drags her through negative the jungle uh and I mean like frame for frame cuts the heels off the shoes slits her her, her skirt in half. Ties her little pantaloons in there. A fucking ripoff Show, of Mikey sh- Douglas. Yes, man. he's yeah. just showing her exactly how he would do it in the jungles of the Philippines. That's right. Which and, is no uh, different than yeah. uh, Michael Douglas and uh, what's it? Um, Kathleen Turner. Kathleen in the Turner. Jungles of Colombia. Jungles of Colombia. Yeah. So uh, they hitch a ride somehow. And Look some at those champs. <laughs> yeah, some fruit. Uh, Fruit truck? Look, I lost my langoustine. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, I remember there's like coconuts. He's like and, uh, dropping back, her off at her little mansion. Back that to her the mansion. Dad lives in. She's a military brat, yeah. mind you, we have to say. And she is the daughter of, I, I can't even tell her her name. Uh, Tina? I don't know. <laughs> All these uh, 80s girls are Tina. She is the daughter of Commander Thickcock and. Um, I don't know. It's it's, it's it's really a, it's really a movie where I mean the script looks great on paper, but. It doesn't really unfold very well. It doesn't. It it doesn't command your attention. So, yeah. the base is a 
front, right, for some sort of weapons smuggling thing. Yeah, which we're, is what we basically learn in the very next scene. We're introduced to a Spanish character named Ortega. We yeah. don't know from what Latin American country is. As he, well he, as uh, the French guy. The French guy, right. Colonel. And, and um, they... Um, you they made wanna, a mistake, my friend. They, he, is, he is very Elmer Fuddish. They want to transport something. He has buyers coming in from overseas whether uh, they're from Spain or, like I said, another Latin American country. Um, Black Star Ninja is working as um, Val... Whatever his name is, Valdez. Oh, no, or, I said Ortega. Ortega's um, right-hand man. And um, in these kind of very unnecessary scenes, I guess we're supposed to believe that Dudikoff is a scrub, right? And yeah. uh, he gets hazed a lot on the base. He's a... Uh I mean, first off, because he's so quiet, everyone, I think, just pick, kind of has this on him. idea to pick on him and think yeah. that he, he's, like, kind of a loser. Yeah. He's got no family, no... No next of friends, kin. Friends, no nothing, next yeah, of Nothing's kin. on file. Yeah. He's completely, like, an orphan, so to speak, yeah. that the you know, military kind of picked up. And uh, we also see that he's not to be fucked with, either. I mean... Michael Dukoff ain't nothing to fuck with because Enter Jackson, Jackson, Jackson. I was gonna say comes in. Who is dumb? strapping black man who with is, a, a great mustache? By the way, great mustache, great teeth. Who is duh? Jackson, Jackson Briggs. Yeah, you can't deny it. You can't gotcha, deny motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can't deny the character yeah. design for Major Jackson Briggs. With the big cyborg arms, they must super be, cocky, they, uh, and he's a, a fucking mustache. military guy. But yeah, the and whole his character. He's an army guy. Just cut his well. hair short, and he's <laughs> Jax <laughs> from it. Mortal Kombat. Shout yeah. out, to, but sans the spandex. Though. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Jackson yeah. gets his fucking ass kicked with in this hokey ass little Demi- scene demonstration. Dudikoff decides to just like judo flip him like four or five times into the dirt. Puts and a, then rock yeah, a puts bucket the, hat. Puts the bucket on his hat and they play, start playing like Looting Tunes noises <laughs> and stuff. It gets if, like Bodo too with the cannon. As far as an action yeah. sequence, this could have been a lot cooler. He could have rocked the shit out of you. Uh, yeah, out of kidney him. punches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, bruised them up a bit. Yeah, but they didn't decide to go that route. They and I guess in a very '80s wholesome way, it's fine. after getting beat up. You know, like Jess said, you cool, man. You cool. Yeah, he's they, like, they become butt buddies yeah, they immediately. Do that very, very, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very. <laughs> oh, tear very it out. Like, kind of ha- handshake. See my power. Yeah. It wasn't even like palm to palm. Yeah, it was not like. It, it, it was, was not fingers. the Dylan and Dutch. No. No. Way. no. It was. That is, that, that it was very was broken handed. He kind of was like. Mm. He kind of handed his hand. It was so bad. Dude. Shake my hand. See my, see my power. See my power. Anyway. Thank you, Crossbones, Whirlwind, or <laughs> Mandarin. Oh, is that who it was? Jeez, was it? Yeah. Oh, that's a bad Mandarin too, right? Because he's yeah, he's he got... looks like fake Shredder. Shout out to Captain America and the Avengers. Wasn't it a glass dome? It was like a fake Mysterio thing, and he was blue, not green. He was blue with a purple cape. Hey, looks like he's wearing like a Shredder outfit. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Shout out to the leader. Shout, yeah. Anyway. So anyway, uh, Jackson gets his ass kicked, and they kind of become friends. Dudikoff and, and Jackson are like, hey. He lends him his bike to go on a date with You Judy badass, Harrison. dude. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, yeah. let me lend you my bike while you're cleaning up these trash cans around mm-hmm. the base. That yeah. was completely unnecessary for, like, an expository <laughs> yeah. scene. Yeah. And uh, to be honest with you, I know they flirt. Uh, Judy Aronson and Dudikoff kind of have like a back and forth through this movie, but yeah. I don't remember the order of events other than like I remember the main plot lines. Like we at some point eventually we go back to the ninja compound. Oh, like their dating the, life. We see like the French guy talking yeah. Yeah. Like, to Black Star Ninja. Yeah, and they're like I want orchestrating. You to get, yeah, I want you to get this uh, out to the buyers. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there is one other important character that's kind of introduced kind of in the middle of the movie. And he's wearing the Raiden hat, and yes. he looks like Gandhi. And I want you to tell me who this person is, because you, I, I, I've seen this movie twice already, and all I can tell you is this guy's <laughs> like a, some sort of World War II vet who landed yeah. in the Philippines and came across Dudikoff no, 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 as a child. No, no, no. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. I, so, um, so yeah. Go ahead, explain it for her. Ortega for explains um, when the p- potential arms. You know, buyers are come in via helicopter, mind you, to his palatial 
Indonesian hilltop, you know, mountain uh, lair. Um, yeah, you just see a regular Asian guy tending to a garden, and he's got yeah, he's got the classic Raiden rice paddy hat, whatever you call it, and um, I got canceled for saying rice paddy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, feel my hunger and uh, my power. Hey, we like Mandarin, so we're definitely AAPI up in this motherfucker. You better believe it. So the point is this. Um, he says he doesn't speak. He says that um, they found him on this island. Uh, however many, if you figure this is 85, World War II ends in, in 1945. He was a soldier for the Japanese Imperial Army, and he ha- he, he didn't know that, that uh, the Japan had surrendered. And so somehow he was still in uniform, and I don't know how he uh, transitioned into civilian life, but... He he looks like Mahatma Gandhi's fucking doppelganger, and um, basically we're led to believe he's just a no name background character at all. But yeah, we learn later on uh, once Joe is basically attacked a few more times, um, chased down, given grief by um, not Thick Cock Judy Aronson's father, but the other uh, major, the Guido we're guy, gonna, the sergeant. We're gonna call him Duke. You, you you like calling him Duke because that's who he was in Frasier. But he's oh okay. But, he was the character of Duke in Frasier. But his name I Martin remember Crane's his name now. Best friend. It's Ronaldo. Uh, yeah, but he's the sergeant. Yeah, Everybody yeah. keeps on calling him Sergeant, sergeant Ronaldo. So Sarge is up his ass. He's a sleaze. He's, he's a, a sleaze he's a ball. skank. And <laughs> that's a skank. That's a skank. That's a skank right there. <laughs> skank dead. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know. Some other goofy shit happens. Um. The date happens. It's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, he they gets, see scan. They see old they see Sergeant Skank, Skank <laughs> see, eating with the French guy, and they see which we still Judy have Aronson a name for and, either. And, do and we? Joe, no, you're 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 mix. You're remixing it. You're pulling a UGK chopped and screwed version. Ortega is the French guy. Is that his name for real? I we can. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. We ju- you just have to know that he that he pronounces the word colonel as a colonel. colonel yeah. yeah, he spells it out phonetically. Um, so uh, we basically come to find out that uh, you know Dudikoff is on the hit list. He's arrested. He's jailed. He's put in the stockade because of Duke being in cahoots with the Frenchman, as we'll call him. And um, I don't know. In some other scene where he's whose house is he lurking around? Before he gets that's fake uh, assassinated. Is, is, is that Thick Cock's house yes, or the other Yes, guy? because his, his house is really the only house we get. There's only two yeah, houses. Yeah, there's Thick right, right. houses and, and, and the villains. The, the, final, the final battle yeah. scene. Because everybody else yeah. just lives on base. You're right. But uh, yeah. So uh, he gets, um, we we called it, very unnecessarily, he gets crept up on. He gets ran up on Wu-Tang Clan style. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he gets a knife put to protect your neck, neck, bro. Yeah. yeah. And um, the flying guillotine chops off your fucking head. And the survey said <laughs> flying motherfucking <laughs> guillotine you know, chops off yeah. your fucking head. Anyway, so he's in a classic ninja line. <laughs> you have remembered well, my son, how to take a knife to the neck. Yeah. And uh, we come to find out. Wow. Big surprise. Explanation for a white guy from San Bernardino, California, <laughs> you know, becomes this Nimpo master. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, they don't even explain that. They, they don't say he's like a military brat himself. No, he, they don't. He, he's he, not native Asian. He's not Asian. He's not. He's so a white he, dude. He and has a half. he has no. He's reason. also American because the dude even says I, I named yeah. you because that's the only American yeah, yeah, yeah. name yeah. I know. Yeah. Which is Joe. Yeah. Which is Joe. Yeah. As in yeah. like G.I. Joe. G.I. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. And so why, how or the means that he ended up Was somehow in Southeast Asia. Yeah. Or Southwest Asia. I have no fucking like, idea. No fucking idea. Not to not to go off, but it, if you remember the shitty uh, the twenty twelve uh, Megan Fox Ninja Turtles, um, what's that guy's name? It's not Winkot, but I always mix his name up. Jer- Jer- Jeremy Finkter. Or yeah, he's like uh, the made up car- white guy who's like the shredder. At, yeah. yeah, at the end of the movie. So even his story is like. I grew up on an American base in Japan, you know, and, and I met the, I met Rukusaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's how he became a ninja. Here. 
There's none of that for American Ninja yeah. at all. Not even the five minute, like five second explanation five of second like, my like, parents died. My parents are, a... Yeah, my parents are missionaries yeah. or my dad was an army medic or something and, and we lived here overseas. Anyway, so he's just found orphan. Uh, raised by some ninja master. Raised by Kung Lao's veteran descendant. Veteran of World War II. Veteran of World War II uh, at the time of six. But here's the funny thing. They're it, separated like a year later. Yes. <laughs> How do you still remember he learns, all this ninja He learns shit? a mastery of ninja he arts in like years a year. of ninjutsu. <laughs> during his from elementary six years. To six, when he should have been learning his ABCs <laughs> and simple like two-digit multiplication. He learns. You know, 16 yeah. times two. He learns, man. He, he learns, learns the, the art fucking, of invisibility. He learns the 36 chambers in, in no time flat. <laughs> he learns alchemy. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, invisibility. invisibility. He's like, hot, sin, sin, who? Thermatology. Retsu, jin. Yeah. Uh, wow. He's one kick-ass first wow. grader. Uh, he's due to cough, man. <laughs> what do you expect? Hashtag not due to cough and any of the stunts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. Wow. But anyway, uh, so that basically leads us up to... The final what? fight. The final fight. I mean, there's the jail scene, which yeah, is moderately which is, entertaining. Yeah, there's there's that uh, chase scene with that mannequin. Remember, <laughs> we rewound it like four times. Talk, talk about it. It looks like it's like a like a skeleton from Halloween Express. It. <laughs> it, it, it gets like cuts from like some, you know, nondiscreet so American, it, maybe an, Italian it, it's dude. An, it's another white guy who is on a motorcycle with a sidecar. With a sidecar, very yeah. like uh, Adam West, you know, uh, Batman, right? And Casey Kasem Robin uh, from uh, Super Friends. And um, they're going down like a pier or dock or something. They're going down a dock at two miles an hour. <laughs> Somehow Dudikoff <laughs> kicks the dude. Roundhouse the, kicks. Roundhouse him. kicked him in the back of the head. <laughs> While it's moving and they're both on it. And they switch positions. Switch positions so, just in time. Hey, bad guy. Get off this motorcycle. Oh, I know. Rather than push him off, I'm going to kick him in the back of his head a la yeah. Double Dragon style. So, yeah, Dudikoff's going to jack you up and then, and then switch, switch positions. switch positions. So that the oncoming traffic can ram the sidecar. Which is an oncoming army convoy with yeah. the guy's hands at 10 and 2. It's a white guy in the car. And then we cut to frame. And it's like a black dude or a possibly like a a, a mannequin with rotting flesh in the same colored the ar- shirt and a wig. Ar- the arms are like super like dark brown as fuck. And they're and they're like orangutan arms because they're super <laughs> yeah. long. Like the from elbow to hand is like seven feet. Yeah, it looks like and, the the every way which way but loose monkey or whatever. And was. I guess what they were trying to do was like, oh, you know, no, no one could see me, but I'm crossing my hands over my face like, oh, shit, the truck is coming. <laughs> And then you got hashtag uh, then, I am not due to cough in a wig. Oh my god! Driving it, and the thing has it almost like long hair. It's like monkey trouble. <laughs> it, with it, Thorberg. it cuts yeah, yeah. directly yeah. from the crash yeah. to the that guy who is now not injured at all from this. Oh my god! Yeah. Devastating yeah. crash, yeah. 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 which didn't blow up, yeah. but yet the car later crashes into the palm tree and blows up That's immediately. Cool. But it, yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, you know, Just horrible, horrible stunts. action stunts and action sequence. A lot of long cuts when it's clearly yeah. not Dudikoff, but the stuntman on the thing. And yeah, they really could have cut those scenes faster. And then you have uh, some of those really bad fight scenes. You were talking about the jail scene, which isn't worth mentioning. There's like a, just a lot of bad choreography, a lot of like open wide shots where you just see a bunch of people doing shit and you can't really decipher what's going on. A lot of it is like uh, like like gang fights almost. Yeah, like, you wouldn't think. So if Dudikoff as one man has to slice, hack and slash his way through each one, I felt like it was just like, okay, fight amongst yourselves. <laughs> yeah. And actually, all y'all motherfuckers are on the same team. Yeah. But I saw a lot of like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, wait, wait, all these guys are, half the dudes are dead. Why are they like two ninjas fighting in the back? Aren't they on the same team? Inter ninja fighting. Yeah. But uh, this, it does suffice to say that after uh, they, they, kid, they, they kill the, the, Sergeant Skank Duke. Yeah. And then uh, Thickhawk, his daughter gets abducted. And we get to the final episode yeah. of the battle here where Dudikoff actually does some cool shit. He actually finally dresses well, up he as dons, a ninja. Yeah, he dons so, yeah, ninja my, big, my biggest outfit. gripe with this movie so far was that he's for a, a movie ninja. called American Ninja, he's not, in the he's not very much of yeah. a ninja up until like the last yeah, 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But it's still pretty dope. Yeah. So uh, the weapons, I mean, that scene alone was like for the fans. Yeah. You know? The, well, he, well, the he meets up. He meets back up with Kung Lao's descendant, yeah. and they reminisce. And he teaches him his 
final lesson. Oh, and then he says, he says, in ninjutsu. he says, there's so much I remember. Yet again, so much I don't. Yeah. In his Academy Award winning performance. His, his only model. Like, like they were like, Michael Dudikoff uh, auditioning for the speak, role speak, of American Ninja. Speak from the heart. We want you to say these two lines. There's so much I remember. Yeah, he was so, so much I He's don't. so sleepy. And you're like, uh, I guess it'll work. He's sleepy, yeah, cut. confused, and constipated. Well, uh, yeah, time. we'll give you a call. Yeah. And yeah, I guess that's what they're yeah. going with. Yeah. But anyway, then he gears up. He gets all ninja out. Yeah. Properly, he has his mask over his nose. Yes, COVID compliant. And he uh, storms the castle to save the girl and stop the bad guy. It literally plays out like that. It's it's, it's yeah. like Rapunzel, but like, it's great, like though. Zelda. So yeah. let's 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 start off. So he first he shows up. He starts shooting arrows. Right. He's just hot oh, guy in it. Black <laughs> Star catches his Clint Barton thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then they uh, he runs off through all the gunfire. And like Un- unnecessarily flipping and getting himself more tired, which I think is yeah. so, we uh, we both mentioned like. Everyone just stops shooting once the ninjas decide to come in and start with their swords, start stabbing at him. And yeah. he just one by yeah. one starts killing everybody. Yeah. Meanwhile, everyone's just in the back like, don't shoot him yet. <laughs> like, right, right. Just let Wait, him fight. Waiting for him to. Yeah. Waiting for the other guys to get out of frame or to yeah. get out of the way. And as so. Dudikoff is just one by one using size shurikens, commas and and the uh, what is it called? The uh, Boken. Boken. Uh, the and, Bokento uh, or whatever. The, uh, ah, the, sh- the sword. Short yeah. sword. I think it's to- token, maybe. Yeah, a, a, like. a boken, as I used to do it uh, in Japan. Uh, a boken is your practice wooden sword for. Um, uh, was it? It's ninja to or something for kendo. God damn it! I have my phone on me. I'd otherwise look it up. Mm. Anyway, uh, he's just taking everybody out, blasting. You know, there's blast people blasting the background as soon as the Jackson uh, and the the American uh, cavalry shows up to blast. We've everybody got to mention out. Ortega killing the two. Uh, shook dealers once they're that's right they're, yeah they're, once they're, once shit starts popping off they're like esos mucho uh, esos mu- uh, uh, I'm, I'm muy, uh, what the hell is he say so something like about this is too much trouble no he's like I, yeah I'm mucho riesgo en esto you know yeah that th- this is too much of a risk and um, he shoots him in the back cold blood plugs him in the back uh, he's all each. <laughs> he's very oh! he just like kind of is that very over dramatic oh as he throws the case up they, yeah. I can't move they yeah. got shot in the back. But they ended up crouching forward. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, and then uh, we get the final showdown: Black Star Ninja versus Dudikoff. Well, wait a minute. In the pool, we didn't we didn't talk about how Kung Lao's descendant dies. Oh, that's right. He, he goes. He, he, he literally says, "I'm going to teach you the art of invisibility." Yeah. And he actually he does says it. something. Like, he says it in Japanese, but it's it's he says it. It's like black. Or no, he didn't say black. He says it's ninja magical art or something like that. Or art just of ma- ninja magic. Ninja magic. Uh, it's like yeah. it's like shin, shinjutsu or something like that. And the art of invisibility and striking yeah. fear and uh, paralyzing, paralyzing your opponents. Ooh, yeah, that was a good. Uh, so he does the hand movements. He's like, it's hey, it's and then literally like does cut. the rep does the <laughs> reptile invisibility and like, action. And he ends up sacrificing himself. This Black Star Ninja taking uh, throws the uh, shuriken, in his shuriken, back or, something, or possibly or a blade, a just some sort yeah. of blade. And uh, uh, I, and I don't think there's any like I love you, my yeah, son, or nothing like that. He takes his mask <laughs> off, and I think that's it. That's it. Just so we see that it's him. He's not like father. He's not like, no. Yeah. Or he doesn't get like angry. Like yeah. you killed my father. My name is Indigo Montoya. Yeah, yeah, he's you not, killed my he's family. Not, yeah, he's not like Kuala Lumpur. You, yeah. you are my. I will avenge you. No, not shout that. out to the Lin Kuei. Shout out yeah. to the Wiz Kuei. Or Sh- Shirai Ryu. Mm-hmm. So, shout out to yeah. The, yeah. So, take it away. It ends up on the rooftop. Yeah. Uh, well, there's actually, the ninja battle is actually pretty cool because they go yeah. through like cool things. Like, he's got. Judy Aronson at this point is already kidnapped and being whisked away. Yeah, she's up in the helicopter yeah. in your yeah. typical with 80s Ortega. fashion. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Dudikoff and Black Star Ninja are just going through all the beats. He's got like the. The comma, they've got the shurikens. Oh. He's got that He's hand got gun, gun thing yeah, that was with cool. the gunpowder. And then lasers. Very cool. The laser. Freaking laser. Hand piece. claws. They're just kind of doing everything you would kind of see that's, ninjas do. That's all from Revenge which is of the why, Ninja. Why, which is why, yeah. yeah. Which is very cool that this movie decides to not just say, hey, this movie's it, it's, it has ninjas in it. No, we're going to dedicate some time to showing you some cool ancient the arts. stuff that they have. That they have. Uh, that's, meanwhile, that Jackson stuff was in every like ho- I'm sorry to say that in like Times Square and like like even in Jersey, like that was basically every like Chinese store where it would. We had one in Hoboken. Uh, I think it was called like Lee's. That's yeah. all it was. And it was like Lee's and it was like luggage. 
I think it was like luggage, furniture, and whatever the hell. And it, I, I, I don't know. It, yeah, like I said, like in the front, some luggage. Uh, I'm, di- I mean, what's what I, I, recesses I, I, of my I, mind? I, I, I'm in my I, single I, digits here. But the main thing was yeah. like, go in the back, like on the right corner, and there's the nunchucks, the ninja stars, uh, the commas, yeah, uh, the posters, the size, the masks. The, a fucking blow dart. Like, yeah. Could you imagine? Like, you can't sell that now, you know? You I remember... That stuff all... Anybody could buy it. I remember going to Chinatown, LA, and Chinatown, New York. And oh, yeah, they had yeah, some yeah. sort of gift shop place like that you saw, you just oh, like yeah. you said. Canal Street, yeah. Uh, you could buy, like, you know, jackets and shirts and... From Canal Street, they had you all You know, it, kimonos yeah. and all that cool stuff. But yeah. then, yeah, up at the counter, at the front, under the glass, they got all these cool weapons you could buy. The counter? Uh, the, you know it. Yeah. And you'd be like, let me see what, that. What oh, you can memory. see it, though. Yeah. Yeah, you, but you have to or be the, 18 to buy. Or, or the shit was behind the wall. And, and uh, 18 your parents walk here. up like, you're not kidding, yeah. man. Yeah. Like, okay, whatever. Yeah. I'll just I, buy it when you're I'll buy it when you're not here. <laughs> I want a $20 throwing stuff. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, the battle's pretty cool. Black Star Ninja, of course, loses. Like you said, in a very Revenge of the Ninja way, he stabs him and does the cool like turn around, slice in the lily, up in the lily pond. Cuts, uh, him, right, yeah, yeah, cuts him right through the jaw. His, his, his mask opens up, up through the belly. Is, which is just a straight rip off of Revenge of the Ninja. Yeah. Disgraces him right there in the pool. Yeah, uh, helicopter gets blown up. Oh yeah, we forgot to mention Jackson, Jackson. Uh, hitting everybody in the balls. There's about like four or five nut shots. Fake uh, <laughs> Chong Lee. From yeah. Bloodsport, fake Bolo. Fake Bolo uh, comes in. He's like, you are next. And dude's like, no. Right, hits him right in the balls. <laughs> Very good, but break. Don't hit back. Jackson's hanging out with Johnny Cage a little bit too much. Another canon films, by the way, that would come out right, three, yeah. three years later. Which, shout out to Bloodsport and JCVD. Bloodsport. Shout out to Pound the Flesh. Yep. So hard. Uh, and in the climactic scene, um, Joe performs a super stunt. Clearly, hashtag not due to cough. Grabs onto the landing gear or whatever, you know, the, uh, the, yeah, the slats, whatever the hell you yeah, call those things. Yeah, the helicopter. Uh, helicopter. Ninja kicks Ortega into the helicopter so that where, he can. And, and I'm going to ask Judy Aronson, there's the frame where he goes from the left side of the helicopter to the right side. And she looks <laughs> she like she's just like, she's I'm like, okay with Flipping this. through the playlist yeah. on the helicopter iPad. She's like, what is the in-store <laughs> film? You guys have Wi-Fi in this <laughs> thing. I asked for two bags of planners, not one. <laughs> she does, She's not... She's how long? Not in how long till we get to, to Bangkok? The, this is gonna be a long flight. She was like, "Look, I'm okay with this." <laughs> she's like, "Um, are they gonna be playing another movie after this?" And yeah. it's only then when Joe, and I mean, even when he fully opens it, her she, hands are, her eyes, her line of sight is down. Yeah, she's looking at the floor like like she's reading like a magazine or something, or and, like dozing off. Yeah, she was not in any danger. <laughs> he opens at all. the door and she's yeah. just like. Ah! <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna ask her about that, and then ah, yeah, she's scared. Oh, great! Help me, Joe. Uh, I don't know how the hell he gets her off. Oh, uh, Jackson me. times it through the back of the convoy, where there's a special RPG, mis- missile, RPG rocket propelled grenade, ready to and, go. Um, lock on, uh, auto lock on, and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just so bullshit. Auto lock on. Uh, they jump off, uh, maybe four feet, uh, down into the roof. And Jackson lets out the uh, oh so brutal line. Okay, I got you now, or something. Yeah. And um, if you if you pause it, the helicopter is totally a model. Yeah. A miniature. It, it's, it's it's a toy it's, on a string. It's like yeah. And uh, twelve inches long, maybe rigged up with some M80s. Yeah. I, I I would say the best special effect is still the cross on yeah. dummy guy, but. And that's it. And uh, literally, you get what you paid for. That, yeah, like you're literally. That's it. They save the no, girl. No epilogue. He, he carries. He carries the girl off the roof. Drops her down to she, Jackson. She broke her ankles from the four foot yeah. drop. She drops. He <laughs> drops her down like a sack of potatoes to Jackson. Cut back to Dudikoff, just looking like a poor man's Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Cut to credits. And that was it. And that's it. Oh well, you. Well, you get a helicopter um, zoom out shot. That's true of the pool uh, of and the, the surrounding thing. area. And I mean, with the music again. <clears throat> It plays just like a longer episode of 18. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. But this music Quite. is like, bah, 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 bah. you know. But yeah, you hit you hit it on the head. This is like A Team, like Rider. you said, Commando, Knight yeah. Rider. Yeah. These kind of like, uh, it's even maybe a little bit of Magnum PI, but not yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like TJ like, Hooker, TJ Hooker. Like, um, 
chips. has that very man's man feel to well, it. Well, that's what I'm saying. And like, it is 85, but stylistically, the film, the clothes, it, it could have come out in fucking 75. Yeah. <laughs> really? The music sounds like something from like... Feathered hair. Some was... really bad, you know, old Shaw Brothers kind of martial arts films. It's uh, yeah, like eighty five is already like new wave. Yeah, like the, 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 the big four of thrash had at least put out one album already by then. You get none of that, and uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, it, it it's uh, yeah, I don't know. Judy Aronson, all the way. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, so uh, that's all I gotta say. So well, let's go for the round though. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and give this a two out of five. One star for Judy. Judy Aronson. One star for Judy Aronson, Woo! and yeah. one star for. The final scene, which was basically the, the whole build up to the this movie is a build up to the final scene, which was for a martial arts movie. It was serviceable. Was it great? Yeah. No. Was it good? It was OK. Yeah. I, I, I we've watched it twice. I think I've seen it enough for probably five to ten years. But well, you also said there are some there's some funny gags and some, you know, we can look at this in 2022 and retrospect and have fun with it. So. Stuff that's not intentional. Like, yeah. The monkey arm guy. Yeah, yeah. and uh, just, you know, the the sheer silliness of it all anyway. Well, you had also mentioned this, too, is that uh, so although it did not, it was not the first in the American zeitgeist of, you know, introduction to ninjas, period, um, it did what it did. It, it definitely helped it, it grease was cross, the wheels, so It was speak. a crossover vehicle to help proliferate the what I call the ninja craze yeah, of the 80s. Which also is, a, uh, a po- in my opinion, a positive way to bring forth more of Japanese culture into, a, into American culture. The same way, like Jess pointed out earlier, no Bruce Lee in the 70s, who knows, maybe like no proliferation of Chinese food even, or things that you would later come to know as the Nishime Dojo yeah. in, in, Ham- <laughs> in, in, in Hamilton, Hamilton <laughs> County. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to McAlpins. Uh, I'm here in Sharonville at the Nuxu Cow Dojo here. That stands for White Warrior. <laughs> We're doing some Tang Sudo here. Tang Sudo here. Uh, classes, with, uh, uh, with, say, with Shifu yeah, Jenkins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're here <laughs> with like, Sensei uh, Tanaka. Yeah. Sensei Hashimoto and... Uh, and uh, th- that number again is five one three. Open Monday through Saturday. Uh, k- kids, kids, fifty percent off Tuesdays and Thursdays. First lesson is free. Yeah, first lesson is free. Guaranteed. Your first white belt in. Uh, we'll be down four at weeks. the McAlpins handing out Michelangelo masks on Saturday for the first five hundred kids that show up. <laughs> in in honor of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Two, Secret of the Use, <laughs> we've got free token Razor birthday bags. <laughs> And this ain't no bebop and rock steady. Uh, that, but my yeah, friend, but no, is you're Americana. Right. You're right. Yeah, uh, yeah. American Ninja, yeah. like everything in America being a melting pot, brought something from a great country such as yeah. Japan and kind of stirred it in with you our know, pot. Look, and, 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 and we and, love it for it. And I mean, to the American like dad, like manly side, like my dad loves films like Death Wish and, you know, Commando, all the old Arnold movies and right, the yeah. Rambo movies. Um they were playing it, you know, whomever the writers were, they were playing it safe. Like, American, like, what's more American hero than military? Like, at this time, um, you had, the year after this, Platoon. Right. Uh, you had Full Metal Jacket in 87, and uh, Casualties of War by Brian De Palma in 89. Uh, Hamburg, I said Hamburg Hill already. Uh, no. Born oh, on 4th Full July. Full Metal Jacket, uh, Hamburger Hill, Good Morning Vietnam, with Robin yeah. Williams, rest in peace. And... Um, you know, eighty five to seventy five is not that long for what you and I weren't even alive for, but um the defeat of the United States. Yeah. You know, and through in Vietnam. The Vietnam War. Yeah. yeah. So um I think yeah, I think there's a little bit of um well intentioned like Cold War, like let's show how America let's show how badass yeah. America is. You and, know? Yeah, most definitely flexing the muscle. Yeah. And I mean you could go down the rabbit hole even further. Uh there's a movie from like eighty four with once again, Robin Williams. Uh, it's called like from Manhattan to Moscow, or yeah, from Manhattan to Moscow or something. And he plays this very Yakov Smirnov type uh, Russian refugee. And you had uh, you ever see Ruskies? No, that was in '87. Uh, war Games. Want some War Games? <laughs> and of course, shout out to Red Motherfucking Red Dawn, Dawn. with Charlie Sheen. 
So shout out to Swayze. Um, shout out to Swayze. Rest in power, Swayze. Rest in power, Bill Paxton as yes. well. Um, so I'm giving it a two. Also, actually, in a rare agreement. Really? Yeah. Oh, we that's two episodes in a row we've agreed. Yeah, because uh, it it can really be cut down to like a 15 minute trailer. You know. That's it. This could be an hour yeah. long movie. You don't even need the love story. It's an hour. It was an hour and forty with credits, but it could be an yeah. hour long movie. You don't. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You don't need the love story, even though Judy Aronson, we love her. Woo! Yeah. But um, you, don't you also need, don't need this don't need the build up with the bullshit. army. You could you literally just make this about a white guy in Japan. Yeah, you don't even need the army up against some ninjas Which who don't like him or whatever. It's funny because we're gonna watch it. Uh, you ever see this Christopher Lambert, aka Raiden? Uh, a movie called The Hunted. No. From 95. It's literally that. He, it's The trailer's like, American businessman, blah, 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 witnesses a Yakuza murder, and as an eyewitness, they're out to kill him. I'm so there. Rather than just flee the country and go back to America, what does he do? He goes into the Japanese woods, finds one of these Sheng Long <laughs> Mr. Miyagi types. <laughs> And just once again, white guy learns he finds 45 Luke, years of ninjutsu. Finds Liu Kang in the woods and just starts in training. one year, basically. Bet I'm there. Finds Aang Shang. So yeah, I I I'll give, I'll give it a two for proliferating the culture, making it more mainstream and expansive. Uh, there are negatives to that, but uh, the other one star being for Judy Aronson. Please, please come to the show. Woo! So. Uh, and that's it. But and, yeah, uh, so uh, I think that's probably going to do it it's here. It's good fun, though, I will say. I don't want anybody to think of future episodes, with the exception of, I don't give a fuck, The Changeling. Ugh. Uh, but even career Christ. opportunities. Career opportunities. Oh, 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 wait. We watch these movies to have fun, so. Yeah, even, we, even though some of them are stinkers. And we, we have a great and, time. And we know that even tearing them like, apart. all this stuff is well intentioned. We know there's things like producers that want to maintain budget. Right, yeah. And time constraints with what the producer has, as, or rather, the director has as a vision. And I do want to say, just We're, also yeah. as a disclaimer, we haven't written or shot a movie yet, so <laughs> we're not critics. Like, it's all right, we're working shit, on it. Yeah, we're not, we'll get there soon. We're, we're not later. shitting on people. Uh, because we're jealous. Uh, it is what it is, and and I think most of these actors would agree that these. Well, well and, I would. I would first off hope everyone would understand that, but second of all, I would also like to extend. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to extend and our arm to anybody you know, from welcome. any of the movies that we were we that we are reviewing that we roasted to please come onto our show, Jennifer let Connelly. Us, we let, roasted you. Let us pick your brain, Judy Aronson. Call me up. Yeah, let's do it. But yeah. Once again, thank you for joining us on episode 109 Nine. of Into the Night Podcast. Peace out, guys. Later. Oh, 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 wait. Let me, uh, let me get a yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah.